Today, I'm going to show you how to set up your TP-Link router. And before starting, if this video helps, please support me. I donate half of all donations to shelters. You can find more details in the description below. So the first thing that you will need to do is to turn on your router. Take the power adapter. Plug one end of the power adapter into an outlet and the other into the router. When the router is turned on, the power indicator will be lit. It may take a few minutes for it to completely turn on. Next, plug the cable from your internet service provider or from your modem into a special internet port. This port is usually labeled as internet and usually it has a different color. Each cable should be inserted until it snaps into place. Now you need to restore the router to its factory settings. Hold down the reset button on the router for 10 seconds. Wait until the indicator lights on the router start flashing. Sometimes this button is located inside the router casing to avoid accidental pressing. In this case, use a thin object to press on it. The router will restart and the settings will go back to their original factory defaults. Plug one end of the ethernet cable provided with the router into one of the LAN ports. and plug the other end of the cable into your computer's Ethernet port. Wait a few minutes for connection. Great, we've connected the router to your computer. Now you will need to set it up. But first, let me show you another way to connect the router if you do not have an Ethernet cable or your computer does not have an Ethernet port. Connect the router to the power adapter and cable from your internet provider. This will enable Wi-Fi. If your router is new and hasn't been set up, your Wi-Fi network will be named after the router. Your router has a unique Wi-Fi network name and password printed on a sticker. Connect to it. Great, you've connected to the router. Now let's start setting it up. First, open your web browser and visit the URL you see on the screen. Use the URL bar instead of the search bar. At the beginning you will see a form with a login and password. Usually it is admin and admin. If these credentials are wrong, then find label on your router. The credentials are often printed on the bottom of the device. If none of this works, it means that your router has already been configured and someone has changed the login and password. If you can't find out the login credentials, just reset the router to factory settings. And then log in to the router's personal cabinet using the standard credentials. If your router settings do not look like mine, it means that your router has a different firmware. I made a video for every firmware type. You can find all the links in the description down below. I want to warn you right away that there are many firmware versions and they may differ slightly. But don't worry, you will succeed, just watch the video and follow the instructions. So first of all, you need to create a username and password for your personal account. Some firmware versions don't have this form, but if it appears, fill in all the details and remember them. Or better yet, write them down somewhere. You'll need them the next time you log into your personal account. First, run the quick setup to manually configure your internet connection and wireless settings. Keep in mind that, depending on your firmware version, some setup steps may be different or appear in a different order. But don't worry, you've got this. 
Just watch the video and follow the instructions. On the first screen, select your time zone. If you don't remember which one you're in, just pick any and click next. On the next page, select the type of internet connection. Usually, this is mentioned in the contract with your internet provider. If you don't know it, you can try clicking the auto detect button. The router will attempt to identify your connection type. If it fails, select dynamic IP and click the next button. Depending on the type of connection you selected in the previous step, this page may look different from mine. If you chose dynamic IP, then select one of the available options on this page. If your internet provider only allows internet access to a specific MAC address, you'll need to clone the MAC address of your main computer. If you're not sure, select Do not clone MAC address. In most cases, cloning the MAC address is not necessary. But if you can't get an internet connection after the quick setup, run it again and try cloning the MAC address. On the next page, set the name and password for your future Wi-Fi network. You can enable the available network bands of your router. There may be one or more bands available. If there are several, enable them all and set a name and password for each one. The password must be at least eight characters long. Once you've entered the credentials, click the next button. On the next page, you'll see all the information you provided earlier. Click the Save button and wait while the settings are applied. If you were connected via Wi-Fi, reconnect to the updated network. On this page, you can configure the TP-Link cloud service. You don't need to change anything. Just click the Login Later button. Great. You've completed the quick setup process. Click finish and after a couple of minutes, check your internet connection. Just Google something. If there's no internet, try rebooting your router. Click the reboot icon in the upper right corner. After rebooting, wait a couple more minutes. Sometimes the settings take a little while to apply and the internet will appear. If the internet still doesn't work, Double check that all the cables are connected properly. If after all these steps, you still have no internet, go to the basic tab. Then select internet. Then clone the MAC address. Save the settings. Reboot your router. After a couple of minutes, check the internet connection. If internet still doesn't appear, contact your internet service provider. He will tell you what type of connection you have and what other settings you need to do. That's all. If my video was useful, please support my work. I donate half of all donations to shelters. You can find more details in the description below.